you, everyone. Very glad to be here. I'm from the Federation of Canadian Municipalities, and we are a member organization representing 2,000 municipalities from across Canada, uh, and we are the voice for municipalities at the federal level. So not surprisingly, I'm here to talk about the immigration and from the municipal perspective. Um, and I hope that, I think the only the key things that I'd like for you guys to take away today um, is not just the importance of immigration to uh, Canada's economy, but the importance of successful settlement and integration of immigrants to, uh, to our economy, to our communities, uh, to our culture, and of course to the, to the newcomers who are, who are coming here. Um, I am a bit of a PowerPoint novice, so I'm going to hope for the best here. Uh, I'm just going to touch on three aspects, uh, settlement services and barriers to success, the role that municipalities play in, in the successful settlement of new immigrants, and then get to the fun part, the immigration policy and moving forward. I'm doing it this way. Okay, here we go. Um, I'm going to start off by just acknowledging what's been discussed here is that all orders of government uh, recognize that immigration is important to our economic uh, future. The federal government has recognized immigration is an important part of our economic recovery. Um, we know that with the, with the growth rates that we've been, we're talking about, stagnant growth rates and uh, an aging population in Canada, that we're looking at about 100%, we're looking at 100% of our, our growth rate coming um, well, excuse me, from our, our labor force, 100% uh, of Canada's labor force coming from immigration by, by 2015. Um, and that all orders of government are banking on immigration. Uh, and great, Christine pointed out rightly how rural uh, communities are looking towards immigration, bringing in immigrants um, to fill labor gaps, to population growth. Uh, large um, uh, communities like Vancouver and Montreal and Toronto continue to welcome newcomers as part to contribute to the diversity and culture of their communities. Um, last year, 2010, Canada welcomed a record uh, 280,000 uh, permanent residents and an additional 250,000 temporary foreign workers. So we've got about 500, 600,000 people coming to our country every year. And we were putting a lot of uh, pressure on their shoulders uh, helping us with our, our economic recovery. And I think an important point um, that, we're, that we need to discuss is that the need for successful new immigrants. And again, all orders of government, uh, municipal, provincial, and federal, understand this, this need. Uh, Canada spends $600 million a year for settlement services, which generally applies to the first three years of uh, new immigrants after their arrival. Um, this is, these are for permanent residents and not for the temporary foreign workers that I mentioned earlier, permanent residents. Uh, there's a funding formula for permanent residents, which is looking at the economic class, um, family class immigrants, and also refugees. And while refugees have a slightly different funding formula that, that uh, can go longer than the three years, generally the formula is for the first three years when, uh, upon arrival. Um, the services that the federal government outlines, whether they're delivered through the provinces and in, in some cases uh, for agreements, uh, block agreements for the, the provinces themselves can de develop and deliver settlement services. Other provinces receive funding for a specific program and then funding is also available to um, uh, service organizations of which I know many of you here are part of. Um, the, generally the rules uh, for that fund, for that money goes to uh, language training, um, the job search support, uh, general orientation, programs and welcoming services. Um, and those are the, I think that's sort of can be considered the general framework for settlement services in Canada. And the, while programs in citizenship and immigration Canada and the many of the service providers in the province are continually evaluating and um, looking over how their programs are doing and the best practices in their programs, the, the, general, um, the general form of gauging the success is to look at the employment levels of new immigrants versus their uh, Canadian-born counterparts. Um, which brings me to the part about the barriers to success for these settlement services is that despite the commitment on all, uh, at all levels and the interest and, and focus on new immigrants, um, the reality is, is that um, newcomers are falling behind. Uh, what we know is that, um, I'm just going to start flipping here, we start, we start off with the fact that, that while the funding uh, is focused on the first three years, that the reality is that Settlement, uh, the settlement period is for the first five to ten years. 
before you see new immigrants catching up with their uh, Canadian-born counterparts. Having said that, that is starting to change and they're seeing that it is taking longer and they're not catching up uh, as well as more established immigrants are um, obviously a lot, will that have, have to do with the recession and, and a greater impact on immigrants. Um, something that I think is of, of strong importance, uh, another, uh, and an indicator that, that newcomers are falling behind is that 44% of newcomers live in core housing need, which, is, uh, which means that they're paying more than 30% of their income to housing. And that's comparable to about the half of that for their Canadian counterpart, Canadian born counterparts. I think housing is, um, I'll just stop for a second to talk briefly, but just the general housing picture in Canada, and I think that people can, hear, especially in Vancouver, can appreciate about the, the issue of affordable housing and adequate housing is a crisis across the board for, for uh, new immigrants, refugees, Canadians. Um, everyone understands that there's an affordable housing uh, problem in Canada. New immigrants especially are, are hit harder by this. Most new immigrants, uh, more new immigrants, are they overrepresented in the rental housing sector and are heavily affected by the fluctuations of the rental housing sector. Uh, in rural Canada, as Christine was pointing out, there, the availability of rental housing and adequate rental housing is, is, an, is an issue. Dif so different municipalities have different concerns, different areas have different concerns, but newcomers are heavily impacted by the housing market and um, uh, are, are, as I'm pointing out here, that more of them live in housing need. 60% um, of university educated immigrants are underemployed. This is also gonna be a topic that Philip spoke about. There's the, the foreign credential recognition, while it's moving forward and steps are being taken, there's still, the, clearly there's a problem. We all know the stories of getting into the taxi cab and meeting, you know, PhD, uh, engineer who, who can't find work related to their skills. Um, and to this end, the Toronto Board of Trade has actually recognized that, that we're losing billions of dollars, two, two to three billion dollars a year in lost economic activity. Um, what the barriers to successful settlement, what are, what are, I mean, we've touched on a lot of, we see that there's a housing problem, uh, it's hard to find housing, but I think that there are, there are key, um, we need to recognize that some of these barriers, we've, we've got to focus on language training and employment, um, making sure people have jobs, but they're, they're clearly, they're, we're starting to see the pattern that there are broader issues to settlement and, and successful integration. Um, employment is the most widely talked about um, barrier, I think, um, ex and which is an important, uh, we have to recognize the importance of of dealing with employment and temporary foreign worker, uh, excuse me, the uh, foreign credential recognition program. Um, but when you, the surveys of, of new immigrants and when you're talking to new immigrant communities and you're looking at what, what people are talking about of the greatest barriers to them on the ground and what service organizations are also saying is that employment is an issue, but beyond, but before employment, uh, uh, possibly more important than employment are the other aspects of quality of life issues, such as housing, um, childcare, public transit. Um, these are all aspects, that the things that people need to establish themselves to be able to find the jobs that they need and to be able to succeed at the monetary level that there's a sort of understanding where we measure the success of immigrants. There are the things that come underneath that that, that need to be recognized. Um, along with a pub I mean, public transit, uh, new immigrants and immigrants, even established immigrants use public transit more uh, in, in areas where it's available in Toronto and Vancouver, Montreal, the main arrival cities for most new immigrants to Canada. Um, public transit is a huge issue for new immigrants and, and also temporary foreign workers who are going to rural areas or the non-traditional areas. Uh, it, it's a sort of surprising, it, it's, it's a very common sense issue uh, when you say it out loud, although I don't think we spend a lot of time thinking about how important it is to have that access to um, uh, adequate and reliable transit when we're new, when people come to this country new and the, the investments that they can make to, towards their quality of life. Public transit is a huge one. I'll touch just briefly on the, uh, the issue of discrimination, which is very important. There's discrimination uh, from reports and studies are showing that it's, a, it's, it's evolving, that, that, but it is a very important aspect of feeling welcome in someone's, in your own community, feeling welcome to Canada. 
discrimination, we're often finding uh, more studies uh, on how it's a discrimination based uh, more on class um, and some different cultural aspects, not as readily on, on skin color or, or language abilities, but it's still something that has to be sp uh, talked about. Um, and also the shifting trends in settlement, um, which kind of covers uh, all of the different aspects of employment and, and discrimination and different barriers, is that with uh, more provincial nomination programs to bring immigrants to certain areas, when we're looking at filling our labor gaps, um, going to other places outside of the, the Montreal, Toronto, Vancouver, and those surrounding areas, there's a lack of, uh, a lack of community uh, that's available to people in, in these less established immigrant arrival areas. There are fewer resources, fewer resource, established resources, community service groups to offer support. And there are also a problem of, of um, uh, things like inadequate housing and rental availability, public transit that comes along. So sort of um, a, a hodgepodge of things, but the pattern that I'm hoping that everyone is seeing, and which brings me to the, my next point, is, is that a lot of this is uh, these are local uh, services, locally delivered services, and, and municipally delivered services in many cases. And it's certainly the municipalities that are are being impacted, as well as hopefully having an impact on new immigrants. So, this, which brings me to this point of the role of municipalities. Uh, from the Federation of Canadian Municipalities perspective, of course, representing so many municipalities across the country, there is a recognition that municipalities are, are frontline service providers. Oh, this is just a, a bit of a mixed up. They're frontline service providers, and cities, big and small, are, are engaging newcomers. They're taking on the responsibility of understanding what newcomers want from our communities um, and the importance of attracting and retaining newcomers in a global and mobile economy. I'm going to quickly run through this one. Um, <coughs> The, it's important to recognize that what I was just saying previously is that, that beyond the employment and language training, there's, there are things that newcomers are going to expect from the communities they come to. Again, we're bringing in 500, 600,000 people. What are we able to provide to them to make, to make our communities more attractive and, and to make sure that they stay in this very competitive, very mobile global, global market? Uh, and where municipalities come in is... Uh, Again, they're, they're frontline service providers. The services that immigrants access on a regular basis, very similar to how we live our lives on a daily basis, are very locally centered. And as service delivery providers, you know this well, but um, my the sort of litany of, of different um, aspects of municipally delivered services and impacted services. Uh, that apply uh, to, to new immigrants that are there as welcoming, to be welcoming part of the community, welcoming services, recreation facilities that provide culturally relevant um, uh, services, multilingual services at uh, municipalities, at city halls. Keeping in mind, of course, that city halls and municipal governments are so often the most accessed and most accessible order of government um, and so have a really strong link and important role to play in in providing those services, identifying the needs that are that are there, and uh, making sure that those services are available, um, public transit, childcare, these are all all aspects of municipally, locally delivered services that are impacting and having an impact on on newcomers, and also uh, that we need to start looking towards to to start determining success when we talk about successful integration and settlement. Um, just a few anecdotal uh, bits of information about municipalities like Vancouver and uh, Edmonton, Calgary, Regina. There's so many municipalities that are now uh, including immigration as part of their, their own uh, economic uh, and city plans as well. Um, back to the main topic here about economic growth, there is a recognition that uh, on, on one hand how important it is to um, uh, attract and retain uh, newcomers, but also to make sure that um, newcomers, you know, municipalities are actually doing a great deal to make sure newcomers don't fall behind and recognizing that when these things fail, when they do, that we're looking at uh, greater dependence on a lot of uh, other social services like food banks, shelters, em emergency shelters, um, uh, and other, uh, you know, a, a wide range of, of social services that are impact. And there's a recognition from municipalities that before it gets to that point, what can we do to invest in newcomers, make them feel welcome, give them every opportunity to succeed. I think there's a very strong understanding from the municipal 
level that, uh, and, and from all orders of government, of course, that there is a desire for, um, for, these, for, for new immigrants and newcomers to our communities to succeed. This, I hope, that we're trying to marry 